Hey everybody, this is Jeff Gross from thegrosslife.com. I'd like to welcome you guys to my first of many WordPress tutorials. This one is actually titled, The Immense Power of WordPress, an introduction. As you might have guessed from the title, this is a really, really broad overview of what WordPress is, what a content management system is, and a bunch of definitions, and just some dry stuff, but it's really important uh, to lay the foundation for what you'll be learning next. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started with this presentation, and we're going to start with a little bit of a table of contents for you guys to go over and look at. What will be covered? First of all, we'll talk about what a blog is and what it does. Uh, secondly, we'll hit the topic of why should you blog, which is a very important one, of course. The third one, and also very important, is what is a CMS or a content management system? Fourth, what is WordPress? Fifth, why use WordPress? Sixth, free WordPress hosting versus private WordPress hosting. I'll explain this more later, don't worry guys. And last, what's in the next lesson? A little overview of what's to come. So before I start, I want to just give you guys a little um, overview of why I like uh, WordPress so much. I use WordPress for every, almost every single site I make because it makes things so much easier and takes the uh, technical uh, headaches out of a lot of what web design and website creation and, main and maintenance is. So in other words, you can separate yourself from the technical side of having to manage the site and maintain it and do all the coding and the PHP, the XHTML, the CSS, you know, all, all, these, all these acronyms you may, have, may or may not have heard, uh, really is what scares a lot of people away from making a website and maintaining one. But the truth is, things have gotten a lot easier. WordPress makes your life easier by taking the technical, uh, technical know-how out of it in a way. You don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to be a web designer. In fact, you don't have to be anything more than somebody who has an opinion and something to write about, and that's what's most important. So that is why I cover WordPress in depth. I feel it's the most important stepping stone and most important building block, call it what you will. I feel it's the most important thing you can learn online to start if you want to get a business going or your own personal presence. WordPress is most certainly the best thing to try first. Okay, so without, without you know, further delaying you guys, let's move on to the next slide. What is a blog? So this uh, is a very important topic because we'll be blogging on a blog, so we need to know what a blog is. A blog is a lot like a journal, except it is generally intended to be read by others. The topics for blogs vary greatly, some being about day-to-day -day activities and others taking a more corporate or political slant. There is no defined or widely accepted format, and so blogs range from one-liners that the author adds every few hours to relatively long, well thought out arguments for or against a topic of interest. Typically, a blog contains posts that are more often than not presented in rever reverse chronological order. A blog, at a minimum, consists of the following components. First is the title of your post. In other words, you tell the reader what it is that this post or um, this art you can article, if you will, or whatever you want to call it, what this is about, you know. Uh, Jeff Gross went to the bowling alley today, you know, or whatever, you know, tell him a bit about what the following content is going to be about. Next is the body area for the main content. So this is actually the article, you know, so you're introducing it with the title, you're giving them an overview of what it is, and then you can hit them with the uh, body text, which comes beneath that. We'll go over all this in major, major, super deep detail really soon, but this is just a broad overview. Next is a comment area where readers can discuss the posting. So if, if I posted about my daily activity today and somebody wants to say, oh, that sounds pretty boring or that's awesome or whatever, they can actually do that in a blog because blogging is also a community-driven um, practice because people will comment on your posts more than likely if your blog has good exposure. Next is a category. You can categorize your post or your articles, if you will. You categorize them. You make your own categories. You do whatever you want. I'll teach you all this later on but it's all for organizational purposes. Next and finally are tags to help, to help identify a post theme or content matter. So in other words, you can categorize your post. So if my post is about bowling or internet marketing, it would fall in the internet marketing category or the bowling category. And the tags would be more specific things about that post. So if it was, a, if it was about internet marketing, about this video, I would say introduction to WordPress, um, WordPress, you know, all these little tags that help identify it. 
We'll talk about this a lot more. Let's just not go into deep detail right now, but that's what it's all about. These are elements of a blog. I guarantee you guys have all been on a blog. Whether you knew it or not, you definitely have been. You know why? Because my site, thegrosslife.com, is a blog. So if you found this video through my site, which many of you will have, you've been on a blog, you've used a blog, and if you've commented on this video or this post, you've also uh, interacted with a blog and, and commented on one. So you've done a lot more than you think. And a lot of times you don't even notice you're on a blog because it's so well hidden. It's so It looks like a regular website. And there's so many blogs out there now that just kind of look like any other website you've been on. But it's um, really well hidden. So I'm sure you've been on them. Just trust me, I'm 99% sure all of you have. And if you haven't, you're about to be because I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own blog and your own site. So you'll most certainly be on a blog very soon. All right? So let's move on. And that's just a brief overview of what a blog is. Why should you blog? This is the most important slide in the whole entire first presentation. The reason why this is so important is because you're here for a reason. You came here for some reason. I don't know exactly what it is, but I can kind of have, I can kind of take a guess on this slide of why you're here. Uh, you may want to be blogging for yourself. Perhaps you have a hobby, you like to knit, you like to uh, play baseball, football, you like to watch baseball, watch TV shows, watch a specific TV show. You can have a blog about anything, and that's for yourself. If, if you just want like an avenue to uh, speak about something that's on your mind, just about your life in general, uh, your journey through life, your children, your motherhood, fatherhood, whatever, there, there's a forum for it. There, there's, there's people who want to read it, believe me. And the truth is, this is WordPress allows you to, to voice your opinion, to voice, you know, let your voice be heard. And uh, a lot of you may be here for that, just to have a website on the internet. Because it's the thing to do, to have a website, to have your own personal web presence. And trust me, I love it. And this, is, and this is what, you know, kind of drives me. I made this site for myself. TheGrossLife.com is a site I made for myself. And I have a couple of other blogs I'll show you that I made for myself later on. And I'll show you all working examples of things that I've done that have been for me. Things that are my interest. And you'll see through my sites, these are all hobbies and interests of mine. So this is one of the reasons you would blog for yourself. Okay? Another reason is, which a lot of you, a lot of you, uh, a lot of the members are here for, is for their business. You might want to blog about your business, about your service offerings, your your testimonials, your clients, all the great work you've done, the, the images, you, you know, the pictures of your jobs, the videos, um, you know, for web designers and programmers, the work you've done to showcase it, whatever it is, blogging has the answer for you. All right. And this kind of blends in also uh, to the yourself, you know, you're blogging for yourself, but um, a lot of times you'll notice now that uh, major big businesses all blog. They have, uh, whether they do it or not themselves is a different question, but uh, most of them have a blog. Why? Because it allows you to see a little bit more into the window of their world, their business, which in the past wasn't exactly always the case. You just kind of bought a product from Sony or bought a product from somewhere else or whatever. Um, and, and you know you didn't really know much about what was happening there, their their development process. You know, the, a business blog for Sony may very well say we're developing a brand new technology. It's coming out in this month, this year, and it allows the general public to see this stuff just at the same time sometimes as as the media. So it's kind of cool. You get to see like a little window in there for for big businesses. But for your business and my business and every other business we'd ever launch, these uh, blogs can be used to give. Your, your clients, your visitors, insight into what it is that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You can go as detailed or as shallow as you want. It doesn't matter to me or anybody for that matter. It matters to your clients because they, you know, you're, you know, they're the ones that will be visiting your business's blog, okay? And, you know, prospective clients and prospect, whatever it is. So they all be coming to your site for the reason of seeing what your business is up to or what you have to offer them, all right? Uh, next reason is, and it's a very important one, and something I hold really close to my heart, is for a cause. Many people blog for a cause. I don't have a specific cause I'm blogging for just yet, but I have a cool project in mind for uh, early next year that's going to kind of put this into play. Um, a big charity blog, okay? So uh, most people and a lot of people can blog for a cause. A cause being diabetes, heart disease, um, cancer, whatever it is. Uh, it could be, you know... Um, uh, orphans, you know, it, it could be a anything, you know, any cause you feel you want to make a difference for. Uh, again, this falls under the for yourself, blogging for yourself for this cause. It kind of falls under the same, um, you know, in, in the same category, except you're doing it um, for very unselfish reasons. You're doing it to bring uh, 